Okay, so good morning. My name is Nick Rothwell, and this is a quick video presentation of an open source multiple device, multiple application spanning router for the Monome. And the ideas behind this really stemmed from some discussions on the, the Monome forum. So I thought I'd put together a, a reference implementation to play with some of the ideas. So it's written in Java which means it runs standalone, or it'll run inside Max, or it'll run inside Max for Live. And the plan is for the thing to be controlled and configured via some bit of OSC protocol. So I've not really thought about user interface design for it at all yet. So what do we have here? We have two monomes. There's a 1 to 8 sitting up here. There's a brand new Grayscale 64 sitting down here. They're both hanging off the same Monome serial connection, and then we have an Ohm 64 under here, which is running its own Monome emulator. Um, and they're laid out to present a 16 by 16 grid. So the application I'm running here is the Conway's Life application written in Chuck, and that hasn't been altered at all apart from changing the OSC port numbers to avoid some clashes. So it thinks it's running on a Monome 256, whereas in fact it's running across these three devices and the spanning router is making sure the devices refresh according to where they are in the virtual space. So you can think of each device as being like a computer monitor, you can think of the application as being like an application with a windowing system. So essentially we are spanning that application across this virtual desktop of three devices. So, so much for multiple devices. We can also run multiple applications as well. If this thing does behave like a windowing system, then it makes sense that you want to have lots of windows, each of which is an application being presented on devices. So let me quickly bring up an application as well. That's one of my shadow rendering library demos, and it thinks it's running on an 8x8 mono. Again, it hasn't had any alterations to it. So it just thinks it's talking to one device, but I can move it around and present it on any of the devices here. So we can move it down, we can move it across onto the grayscale, up, and back again. And even though we've got this thing scribbling all over the devices here, the game of life is still running underneath, and the game of life can still be interacted with, so it's still taking button presses. like so. Let's put a few more things on here. And similarly the small application can be interacted with as well. So if I just flip across and run something else there instead, then this thing runs as a simple interactive thing taking button presses and displaying. And again if I Move that down, you'll see it's here, and across you'll see it appearing here. Or for that matter, we can actually span devices with it. Now one of the clever things, I guess, but also one of the important ones, is that I've taken a lot of care to track button down and button up events. So for example, if I hold a button press here, and then move that application, the button release goes to the right place, by which I mean the application gets the button release in the same location as the button press. And ditto if I move the application, uh, where did I put it? Down along onto there, hold a button, move the application around, release the button. So it's not likely you want to scroll applications around on stage unless you want to show off, but if you think about an, app, an environment where you've got several applications running, you might well want to do something to set an application running and then move it out of the way, or hide it, interact with the other application in the same space, and then come back to the one you had whilst holding down some buttons to hold some functionality on the first application all the time. So that's kind of the idea behind that. If you think about it, it's like 
smart MIDI controller keyboards that know how to sustain notes even if you remap what they're doing on the fly. So that I think is about that. Uh, I thought it crashed for a second. No, it's just life had finished itself. That's all right. Let's kick off another glider gun while we're here. Or not, as the case may be. So, ah yes, one more thing. I've said that I'm running two monomes and an emulator here. In fact, I'm lying slightly. I'm actually running two monomes and two emulators because I got bored a couple of nights ago and decided to write a little emulator for the motor mix, which you can hopefully see here if I haven't got my arm in the way. That's a simple MIDI OSC bridge. And again, applications should span correctly. So if I hold down the button on here, it will move across. And in fact, let me get the counter application going again. There's a bit of latency there. I suspect that's probably because of the quite heavyweight MIDI handling that I'm doing to drive the lights there. But when we're in the OSC world, you'll see it all seems quite snappy. And I guess the final thing is we've actually got a scrolling layer for life as well. There's no reason why we can't move that around. So we can also move that so it runs on the motor mix. And back and forward and back. And yeah, I think that's kind of it. I will put the URL to the project in the credits in case anybody wants to download the code, run unit tests, have a play with it. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening.